right, now we're back. Hopefully you're now the owner of Fear of a Blank Planet. Next, Live in New York City 2007 was released. This is a Blackfield live album. Blackfield is another Stephen Wilson project, teaming up with his buddy Aviv Geffen. I really don't have much recollection of this show. I've only seen it once, and that was a couple of years ago, and I'm not home, so I can't put it on. But I remember really liking this show. I will return to it. The only thing I don't really like is late in the show, Aviv feels like taking off his shirt. And I think these guys are more artistic than that. I think their music stands up on its own, and the, to me that just felt like kind of a flashy rock star thing to do. Maybe he was just warm, but to me at that point in the video, it kills a little bit of the, uh, the momentum that was building for me. But maybe you love that. So get this DVD if you don't have it. The songs are good, the mix is good, plenty discreet like Stephen Wilson's live stuff uh, ordinarily is. And uh, if you like Blackfield at all, I think you will definitely enjoy this. G Someone on QQ writes, The 5.1 mix has a certain quad feel to it because, one, the center is sparsely used, only acoustic guitar, and vocal on Aviv's solo song, and two, the backing vocals of the bass and keyboard players are in the back together with some keyboards. So that's very cool, and that is a typical mixing approach, both to studio albums and discrete live albums, to have the main rock elements up forward and supportive elements in the rears. And I think that happens to work very, very well. So definitely check out this DVD if you're able to track it down. The next Stephen Wilson multi-channel release to hit the world was Porcupine Tree, Light Bulb Sun. Again, this album goes back in time, back to before In Absentia. And some people uh, say that they think Porcupine Tree's earlier albums were very Pink Floydy, and that some of that is lost from In Absentia forward. I actually don't find that to be the case. I think there is plenty of Pink Floyd influence throughout all of their albums. I find Lightbulb Sun and Stupid Dream to be a bit on the simple side for my taste, and that Porcupine Tree really started to nail some accessible, complex work from In Absentia forward. But that's just my take on it. Lightbulb Sun, April 2008. John Urban from Quadraphonic Quad, pretty much the father of Quadraphonic Quad, that website really is his brainchild, and to him the surround community owes just an immense debt of gratitude. Just as with Stephen Wilson breathing life into the surround hobby and providing a lot of material, John Urban over the years has provided a place for surround heads to meet and mingle, enjoy this hobby together. Many thanks to you, John, for your site, Quadraphonic Quad. And with that, he says about Lightbulb Sun, This is one of the finest DVD audio discs I own, and I own a lot. First off, I had never heard these songs, so listening was totally a new experience for me. I popped it in the Acura and drove around with it a while. The first thing I noticed was that the surround mix was tremendous. There were vocals all over my car, and it drew attention to the music. The lead vocal is generally in the solid center channel, and at times varies from clean mic'd to a telephone call effect. The harmony vocals appear in the discrete rears, and at times sound like they're overhead. In some songs, the voices emanate from all four corners, which gives a chilling choir effect. Overall, an amazing mix. So as with Stupid Dream, there are definitely some standout moments on Lightbulb Sun it's definitely worth tracking down, at least from a historical perspective. Ultimately, I don't know if I'll hold on to Lightbulb Sun or Stupid Dream Forever, but there are some great moments and the mixes are absolutely fantastic. And if not for anything else, it gave Stephen Wilson a chance to 
practice his trade because what you're going to find out in this and subsequent videos is that Stephen Wilson has become an absolute master of surround mixing. And here we have the back of the HDCD DVD audio combo set. So this must have been from Japan. I think the version I have is just a CD and the DVD audio. Anyway, if you have the HD CD, that must just be fantastic. I know that my oppo can play HD CD. Every once in a while I'll throw a disc in and, and it'll tell me that's what it has found. But I can't say whether it actually sounds better than normal CDs. And here are the discs, because I know that's what you like to see. I know you like to see track listings and mix information and the labels on discs and stuff. Next we have Schoolyard Ghosts, May 2008, CD and 5.1 surround DVD audio combo set, complete with a merchandise sticker there. So again, K-Scope, an absolute juggernaut in putting out quality multi-channel music for us in the last several years. No Man, Schoolyard Ghosts. So I have this album, I've heard it several times, I really like it. It's mellow. Some of Stephen Wilson's music can be described as music for sad adults. And uh, I'm grinning right now. I think that sad music is very important. And we'll get to more of that later. And here's the back. I would say the standout track here is Wherever There Is Light. So if you can find that on YouTube or um, a clip on Amazon or something, go ahead and give that a listen. The rest of the album is, is solid as well. I just think that Wherever There Is Light is the most memorable melody. I like the sound. I like the vibe. This is a cool record. So, No Man's Schoolyard Ghosts. I would pick this one up ahead of Together We're Stranger. I just think it's the more solid record. Now, <laughs> we get to Insurgentes. Insurgentes. This is a Stephen Wilson solo album. Is this the first Stephen Wilson solo album released in multi-channel? I think that's true. And anyway, now you'll get why uh, I introduced this video the way I did. Stephen Wilson likes to make use of this style of art. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Kind of a morbid, macabre style of art sometimes. Here, I presume we have him on the cover, but he's behind a gas mask in broad daylight. So just kind of a weird effect. And here, this copy is still in its cellophane. It's got its merch sticker there. I would describe this record as being somewhat industrial, somewhat experimental, sonic landscapey. There are some great songs on it, but to me this album is more about the sounds, the vibe. Insurgentes was highlighted on Quadraphonic Quad, December 2008. E. Leaf, in a Quadraphonic Quad review, says, the surround mix is very involved. I wouldn't necessarily say that the sound ping-pongs that much, but all five channels are discrete, and he uses them very well, particularly to create sound walls to envelop the listener. This is more than a glorified stereo mix. Stephen Wilson is quickly becoming a 5.1 master mixer, if he isn't already, and this album shows those talents front and center and rears and subwoofer too. So yeah. Stephen Wilson, by this point, is definitely becoming an awesome surround mixer. This album, as Elif alluded to, is pretty dense. So if you like stuff like Nine Inch Nails, even though that might be a horrible comparison, <laughs> I would say that, yeah, if you like kind of dense industrial music, you can't go wrong with this album, and there are some great songs. So please, please, do yourself a favor, check it out. And here we have the back with some mix information, a lovely barcode sticker there. Sorry about that. See, that's the dark side of commercialism. You got to do what you got to do to get this music out there. But then this horrible sticker gets slapped on the art. 
Hopefully that was on the outside of the cellophane. Next, March 2010. The world was treated to Porcupine Tree, The Incident. This album is a concept album, so maybe we could view this as Porcupine Tree's The Wall. The concept was inspired by Stephen Wilson driving by a traffic accident one day and seeing a police sign that said police, incident. And it just struck him that an event that could cause such tragedy for the people involved could be boiled down to the word incident. And from that, we get a very cool album. Lizard King on Quadraphonic Quad says, finally got this one on DVDA. As I got the limited edition copy DVD with DTS when the incident was first released in 2009, so I didn't rush and get the DVDA. Having listened to the DVDA a couple of times, I can say that even given the excellent DTS stream, the DVDA high res MLP still sounds better than the DTS. So, yeah, I guess uh, this album was released in 2009 and I just didn't know it but I found the high resolution copy, like you see here, in that lovely Super Jewel case. So if you can find it on DVDA and listen to it in high res, why would you bother with the DTS, right? And here is the back art. This is a long record. I think it was originally a double album. And I don't find it as accessible as Fear of a Blank Planet, but I do find it musically lovely. The concept is intriguing and the songs are really solid. So I'm the problem. I just need to find time to actually sit and listen to this a little better. And uh, I will get around to that as soon as possible. As Stephen Wilson said in an interview, each song is written in the first person and tries to humanize the detached media reportage. Very cool. I recommend this record. And then, in July 2010, the surround world was expanded with Anesthetize, a live porcupine tree concert, this time on Blu-ray and in high res. This is a super cool concert. Tim Bray 4 on Quadraphonic Quad says, recent memories of the incident tour were swept aside to wallow in the glory that was the Fear of a Blank Planet tour. This release captures the intensity of the concerts and showed me a lot of on-stage interplay that can be obscured from typical seats. Having the camera over Gavin Harrison's drum kit alone was worth the price of admission. Having the actual visual feeds over the audio in extras was a terrific idea. So again, as with arriving somewhere, and all of Stephen Wilson's live videos, I believe. This is mixed very discreetly. You have important information, mostly supportive elements, but definitely important musical information in your surrounds. So I absolutely recommend picking this up every bit as much as I recommend picking up Fear of a Blank Planet. Uh, this will not fail you. So here we have uh, the Blu-ray cover, including the merch sticker there. And uh, as it points out, Last Hole, not sure how you say that name, Lasse Hole, is involved with a lot of Stephen Wilson's videography. So they are quite the dynamic duo. And here's the back, giving some DVD and Blu-ray information. Not sure if my set has both DVD and Blu-ray, but at least this version did. So there you go. Very discreet 5.1 concert. Phenomenal performance and sound quality, by the way. Discreet isn't everything. This concert really delivers an excellent, artistic, enjoyable experience. And next, January 2011. The world was treated to base communion loss. I've only ever heard this one in stereo so far. I'm still waiting to find the right price in multi-channel. I am going to pick this one up uh, probably ahead of 
Pacific Codex, just with a higher priority. I mean, this one seems to have more musical elements coming and going at more of a pace that captures my interest. Pacific Codex tends to kind of drift, take a long time getting where it's going. I would not say that loss is melodic <laughs> or accessible in any sense, but it just seems more engaging to me. And I have a very morbid wife who loves the macabre, so I could see pouring a couple glasses of wine, turning the lights out, sitting and experiencing this with her. I love this review from Cap'n Crunch on Quadraphonic Quad. He says, an eight out of 10 from me. Negative one for unnecessarily creepy artwork, in quotes, quote unquote artwork. Negative one for being 4824. Now, hey, come on, not everything can be 96 or 192 or, or better. And besides that, I'm not convinced that it makes a difference to the human ear, but Captain Crunch is making that argument and I respect that. He could be right. Being familiar with dark, ambient stuff, he goes on to say, Dead Can Dance, This Mortal Coil, Bill Nelson's Dark Phase, Fripp and Eno, etc. This fits in perfectly there. As other members have pointed out, it has no song structure, only piano and electronic treatments, which are panned perfectly throughout the surround spectrum. The fact that it cuts off abruptly at the end is a frippism. Obviously, this is something that you need to be in the right mood for, but it's very good and interesting nevertheless. And someone else uh, in the comments section on Quadraphonic Quad challenged listeners to pour a glass of wine, sit in the dark, and let this album scare the hell out of you. Or uh, actually, no, that was on YouTube. Yeah, that was a comment on YouTube. And here we have uh, the backside art. And I think you can kind of get where Captain Crunch is coming from. I bet the artwork is uh, creepy along these lines. But you know, a little creepy now and then. It's all good. In September 2011, Grace for Drowning was released. I really like this Blu-ray. To me, it harkens back to King Crimson's Lark's Tongues and Aspic era. It definitely has some noodly passages with some strings and different, almost random seeming percussive elements. This album also has some very strong songs, just like those classic King Crimson albums. So I wouldn't put this way high up on the list of accessible Stephen Wilson work. And that makes sense since he had just been involved in a bass communion project. So I do recommend this. I just don't think it's gonna be an album that you should start out with. If I were you, I would start with Fear of a Blank Planet, maybe Deadwing. And here we have the back of the Blu-ray with mix information. Captain Crunch should be pleased that this is 9624 LPCM. So that's lossless, uncompressed. Yeah, this album sounds marvelous. It's a bit dark. It feels a bit long. It feels a bit heavy to me. So it does get occasional listens, but it's definitely not in my uh, top half of preferred Steve Wilson work, I would say. But I still, I still highly recommend it. Pick it up when you can. As with many of Stephen Wilson's works, there's usually like a super duper mega deluxe version. Though to his credit, he does tend to release his multi-channel works as a standalone disc, either DVD or Blu-ray. So if what you're after is his work in multi-channel, he's not trying to gouge you. You can absolutely find those releases at very reasonable prices. You're not paying for a bunch of extras. If you want to dive in and go for the super deluxe version, he puts a lot of quality, a lot of thought, a lot of art, a lot of content into that. Ordinarily, the books help to tell more of a story. They help to draw you deeper into the album as a concept, deeper into the music too. So Stephen Wilson's super deluxe versions are worth the price if you're really looking to immerse into an album. 
and again, if you want to uh, save some money and you're on a budget, he's taking care of you there too. So kudos to him for, for hitting both ends of the spectrum there.